In this tutorial, I'm going to show you guys how to make these basic chairs in Blender. I'm going to be using a few resources online, so I'm going to be using this wood06 on cgbookcase.com, and I'm also going to be using this Lembomo, Lebombo HDRI on uh, HDRI Haven, and I'm just going to be using the 1K version uh, for this, and then on the wood06, I'm going to be using the 4K version. So if you just want to download these, and I did just want to point out real quick that both of these websites do have Patreons, so if you want to support them, I'm sure they would appreciate it because they make really awesome textures uh, that I can use in my tutorials. So here we are in Blender now. I'm going to turn on my screencast keys right here, and then also I'm going to be enabling two add-ons in Blender, so if you're not using these add-ons, uh, you can just enable them. So go to Edit and then Preferences, and I'm going to add the loop tools add-on. This is a really great add-on. I use it a lot and we'll be using this later in the tutorial. And then I'm also going to be adding uh, the node wrangler. So just type that in and this is on the add-ons right here. So click on this and just add it in. We're going to be using this later and just close that out. So I'm just going to start off by deleting everything except the cube. So I'm just going to click on these two and just press X and delete them. Uh, and now let's use our cube. So first we're going to be making the seat of the chair. So I'll just tab into edit mode on the cube here and I'll press S and Z and bring it a lot smaller. Okay, let's press three on the number pad for side view and then I'll press Z and move my mouse over this way to go into wireframe mode. And then I'll just deselect everything and just press B and box select this front area right here and we can just zoom into it. And then I'll press E to extrude this out and then R to rotate this. And basically what I'm doing is I'm making kind of a little bit of a lip so that like when you sit on the chair, it's not gonna be jabbing into your leg, you know? So this is like the front of the chair where you would sit on it. So I'm just gonna make a little lip here. So I'm gonna now rotate this, move it down, and then press E again and just rotate it again. Just making a little smooth lip just like that. So I'll go back into solid mode and tab back into object mode, just like that. And then let's go back into edit mode and I'll press Control R to add a loop cut right here and just click and then right click. And then I'll go into wireframe mode by pressing Z, moving my mouse over. And then I'm going to just box select this side of it. We're just gonna be deleting this side of it and then we're gonna add a mirror modifier so it'll be easier to model. So I'll press X, just click on delete vertices and then over here on the wrench, we can click on add modifier and I'm going to add the mirror modifier. And then I'm gonna turn on clipping and that way these two areas are joined together. So when clipping is turned off, if I just move these out, you can see they're not connected, but when clipping is turned on, now they're connected. Now I'm gonna press control R right here and then click and then just move this over and then just click again to place it. And we're basically making a little open area right here where the brace of the chair is going to come through and then the legs will be down here. So now I'm going to press three on the keyboard, not on the number pad, just on the top of the keyboard to go to face select mode. Then we can just click on this face and I'll press seven on the number pad to jump to top view. We'll just move over here and then I'll press E and extrude this out. And I want it to be extruded out about the same amount as this so that Right here, this is gonna be a square. So this amount, I want it to be extruded out about the same. So I can just press G and Y and just move it until it's about the size that I want. Let's tab back into object mode. So now let's add the chair legs. So to do that, I'm gonna press Shift A. I'll go to mesh and I'm gonna add a cylinder. And then right behind me, right over there, you can see uh, there's the add cylinder preferences. We can open that. And then right here on the vertices, I'm going to set this to eight and then I'll tab into edit mode and we'll just scale the whole thing down. And then I'll press seven on the number pad for top view and Z and move my mouse over to go to wireframe. And then I can just press G and move my mouse over and then I'll also scale it down a little bit more just so it's something like that. Okay, and then we need to bring this down more. So I'll press G and Z and bring it, bring it down. 
and then I'll press three on the number pad for side view and G and Y and just move it over because we don't want it to be going inside that lip there. So I'll just move it over a bit. And then let's also save our project. So go file and save as. Just save this file somewhere on your computer. You can see I've done this tutorial a few times, just practicing it and trying to get it right. So I'll save that now. And then I'll go to wireframe again by pressing Z, moving my mouse over. And then I'll press one just on the top of your keyboard so we can select vertices. And then I'll just box select this bottom row right here and then I can press G and Z and just move that down just as far as I like it to be. And then I'm gonna tab into object mode. I'm gonna select everything and press G and Z and just bring it up so that it, the chair is now resting on the grid floor. Let's tab back into object mode on this object right here and I'll go into wireframe and I'm just going to now box select this top area, move it down, and then I want this to actually rotate over. And to do that, I'm going to hold down control, just make sure that this top area is selected and then go to side view with three on the number pad. And then I'll hold down control and click and keep on doing that a couple of times. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna extrude it out and rotate it. And then also if we wanna just manually uh, fix some of this, we can just select it and just rotate it. And then I'll box select this and extrude it out all the way over to here to the end. And then I'm gonna be doing that same technique. So I'll just hold down control and click a couple of times just to rotate it over. And then we can just manually rotate this just to kind of fix it. I'll select this whole thing, move it back a little bit, just like that. Let's zoom out. I'll box click this bottom area and I'll extrude it down with E and just bring it down just to the same level as this one, just like that. And then let's zoom into this area right here and we're gonna extrude up the back of the chair that you rest on. So I'm gonna zoom in here. I'll press Z and move my mouse over here for solid view. And I'm going to Alt and click on this edge right here and press G and Y and move it over a little bit just so that we have a bit more surface area right here. And then I'll press Control R to add a loop cut. I'm gonna add two loop cuts and then I'm going to left click and right click just to center that. And then I'll deselect everything and I'll press three for the face select again. You can also uh, click right here for vertices select, edge select and face select. So now we can select faces. So I'll just shift and click on these four faces right here. And then I'm gonna be using that loop tools add-on which I mentioned at the starting of the tutorial. Uh, so to use this, I'm going to make sure you're in object mode and press T just to open up this panel right here. And then over on edit, you can see it says loop tools. So open this up and there's all these different things you can do. I'm going to choose circle. And now you can see what that did is it took everything that we had selected and it made a circle out of it. So it's a perfect circle or as perfect as it can be with how many vertices it has. Um, and I'll just press N to close this side panel now. And then I'm going to go file and save again, just to save that. Okay, and then let's go to three on the number pad for side view, and I'll bring this up a little bit, rotate it a bit, and then I'll extrude it up and rotate it a little bit more. And then I'll extrude this again and just move it up and make sure it's going a little bit back because usually chairs are a little bit slanted so you can kind of rest back on them. And if this isn't quite correct, you can just move it back and forth like this just to make it going back a little bit. And then I'll press period on the number pad to jump to this top area. I'll go back to the vertices select by pressing one or just clicking on this. And then I'm just gonna delete this one right here. So I'll just delete vertices. And then I wanna fill this as a face. So I'll alt click. So with pressing alt, you can click on this loop right here. And then I'll press F to fill that face just like that. And then I'm gonna press Control B to add a bevel because we're gonna be adding a subsurf modifier later. So we need a little bit more geometry uh, to define it. So I'll just press Control B and move my mouse wheel one up 
just to add one more loop in there and then just click when you like how it is. And then let's tab into object mode. I'm gonna click on add modifier and we'll add a mirror on this. And you can see because we did this all in edit mode, the origin point should still be in the center right there. And if your origin point isn't in the center of the 3D scene, to make this mirror over here, you can click on this mirror object and tell it that it's gonna mirror in between this object and it should just hop right in between there. Let's add a subdivision surface to this object now. So I'm gonna go add modifier and add a subdivision surface right down here. And you can see right here, there's not enough vertices down here. So in edit mode, I'll just zoom into this and press control R and then click, bring it all the way down, almost to the bottom, not quite though, and then click again. And then I wanna add another face in that face. So I'll go to the face select or by pressing three, click on this and then press I and that'll inset the face. And then there'll be another smaller face inside it. And that way we give the subdivision surface modifier more geometry to work with uh, so it knows how to smooth everything out. And then I use right click select. So to smooth this object, I press W and shade smooth. Uh, you can also go right here and click object and shade smooth because you're probably using left click select because that's the default in Blender. Uh, but I used Blender before they switched to left click select and it was really weird that they used right click but then I just got used to it. So now I just use right click select because I just got into the habit of using it. Uh, so let's do the same thing for this side too. Also right down here on the viewport, it's the render set to two and viewport is set to one. I wanna bump that up one more so that it's a little bit higher resolution. So that's set to two subdivisions now. And then let's do the same thing here. So I'll press control R, click and bring this down almost to the bottom, but not quite. And then I can press period on the number pad and that'll just zoom into this area. And then I'll press three for face select click on the bottom face and press I to inset a face inside that one. And let's go to three for side view. I'll tab into object mode. And then on this object, I'm gonna select it, tab into edit mode. And I wanna bring this object a little bit more down because right now it's actually floating a little bit. So I'll just select the whole thing and press G and Z and move it down a little bit, just like that. And then I want to move this lip in a bit so that it's kind of resting on the leg. So I'll press one for vertice select, Z for wireframe, move my mouse over, and then A to D select everything. And I'll press B and box select the lip here. And then I'll press G and X, nope, G and Y, and just move that in a bit, just like that. Then I'll tab into edit mode. We can just go out of wireframe. And now I wanna add a subdivision surface modifier to this object as well. So I'll go add modifier, subdivision surface. You can also just press control two or control one or control three. And that'll that's a shortcut key for adding a subdivision surface. And then I just want the viewport and render to be two. And then we'll need to define a lot of these edges. So let's add some loop cuts. So I'm going to tab into edit mode and I'll press control R, add a loop cut here. And then I also wanna add a loop cut right down here to define this edge. So I'll add one there. And then over here, we're gonna to need to add some loop cuts. So I'll add one right here and one over here just by pressing control R and then moving it to where you want. And if you accidentally place it somewhere where you don't want it to be, you can make sure it's still selected this entire loop and you can double tap G and that'll activate the edge slide. And so it'll slide along its edge and then you can just move it to where you want. And then right here, we need to add a couple loop cuts too. So I'll press control R, add one up here and control R down here. And then one more loop cut right here. Oh, actually another one. So I'll add a loop cut here and then we'll add another loop cut here to define that. And I guess we'll add one more right here. So now it's very defined, but it's also very smooth. And then I'm just gonna shade that smooth. So modeling is almost finished. We do need to add this uh, backrest right here. So let's just do that. It's pretty easy to model. 
Um, so if you want to center this 3D cursor to the center of the scene, you can press Shift C, and that'll just center everything. And then I'll press Shift A and add a cube. Let's go to side view by pressing three on the number pad. I'll tab into edit mode and then I'll press S and Y and make it a lot thinner. And then we can move it up right here and scale it down a little bit to the size that we want. And then let's just look over and see how long up and down we want it. So I think that's a good size for how long up and down we want it. So now let's uh, go to side view. I'll tab into object mode and then I'm going to go object and set origin and I'm going to set the origin to geometry. And that way the origin point is going to be in the very center of this. So now on side view, I'm going to in object mode, I'm going to press R and just rotate this so that it's the same angle as the chair and just move it over there. And then I'll tab them into edit mode and we'll press S and X and scale it up to the correct size. And you can see that this is a little bit too long. We need it to be a bit thinner right here. And so to do this, I'm going to press S and Y, but if we just press S and Y, it's going to scale it on the global Y. So it's just going to scale it this way. But because we rotated this object in object mode, the object still knows that it's been rotated. So if we press S to scale and then Y, instead of scaling it on the global Y, I can press Y again and it will scale it on the local Y. And if I go to side view right here and press S and Y, you can see here's the global one. And if I press Y again, here's the local one. So now we can just rotate it like this slant down a little bit. And then I want to add a curve to this object so that when they're sitting in the chair, it kind of fits the back better when you're sitting. So I'll press control R and then move my mouse up to make three loop cuts. And then I'll left click and right click to center those. And then I want to move this back, but I'm going to move it on the local Y again. So I'll press G double tap Y and then move it down a little bit. And then I'm going to just click on this middle loop cut. So I'll press Alt and click here to select the middle loop cut and then press G, double tap Y and move it down a little bit. Let's add a subsurf now. So I'll click add modifier and add a subdivision surface right there. And then we need to add some more loop cuts again. And I'm going to make the viewport to two as well. And then I'll tab into edit mode, press control R and I'll add a loop cut up here. Control R and add a loop cut down here. And then one more over here and another over here. And then I do want to add one more loop cut just to straighten up this edge a little bit. So I'll press Control R, click, and then right click. And that'll just sharpen up that edge right there a little bit. And then I'll just shade that smooth again. And now we're finished with the modeling of the chair. Let's just go file and save this again. Before we do the materials though, I'm going to just change a few settings. So up here, I'm going to go down to the color management and just make sure this is set to filmic. I don't have this set to filmic on default because I do video editing. So it changes the colors a bit, but it should be on default set to filmic. And then I like to use high contrast to bump out the colors a bit and just make the final render look a little bit nicer. And this uh, Filmic, why we're using this is because uh, it's a different color space than the standard and it just helps to make things more photorealistic. So you should always use the Filmic Blender if you're doing like photorealistic rendering or things like that. And then let's add the HDRI. So I'm gonna go over here to the world settings and then right here on the color, I'm gonna press E and that'll jump to the environment texture. You can also just find it uh, down here, but I like to just press E and that'll hop to the environment texture. And then right here we can click on open and here's the Lebombo 1k HDRI. Uh, so let's just add that in. Of course you can use a different HDRI if you want, and then let's go do some materials now. So I'm going to start by just doing the kind of metal part of the chair. So I'll just click on it, go over to the shading tab. And then I don't want these two other layouts right here. So I'll just click on the corners of them, move out and then move back in and then click away and that'll close it. And then I'll just do the same thing for this one. So I'll just click, drag and then drag back and let go just to close that. 
and then let's click new. I'm gonna call it legs. And then I'm gonna go into rendered mode just to see what that's looking like. And I'm gonna make the base color kind of a gray color. And then I'm gonna turn down the roughness. And if you want to, you could turn up the metallic and make it look like a metal material, but I like it to kind of look sort of like maybe a painted metal. So I'm actually gonna leave the metallic off and that way it'll still be shiny, but it'll look a little bit more like plastic. Um, but if you want to make it look like metal, you can turn the metallic up and now it looks like a, like a metal piece. And I'm actually going to add a camera now. So I'll press shift a and add a camera. There it is. And then I can just move to where I want the camera to be. And then I can press control alt number pad zero. And that way the camera will hop to where we are. And then I can just press G and move this around to where I want. And then I do want to make the background transparent just so that it's a little bit easier to see the chair. So I'm going to move over to these settings right here, scroll down. Actually, this is the wrong setting. Let's go up to this one. There's two render settings. Uh, and then over here on the film, we can turn on transparent and this way it's a lot easier to see the chair. So I'm going to click on the seat. I'll click new. We can just call it wood. And then I'm just going to save again by going file and save. You can also just press control S and then download the wood textures that you want to use. And then I'm just going to drag and drop the textures from my file browser. So just connect the color up to the base color and then I'll drag the roughness in, bring this over and connect the color to the roughness value. And then right here, the color space, we need this to be non-color because it's not actually adding anything to the base color. So it needs to be set to non-color to work properly. And then also the normal, drop this in here. We'll move it over and just connect the color to the normal. And then this is yellow and this is purple. So we need to convert it so that Blender can actually use it. So I'll press Shift A. I'm gonna search for a normal map and then drop the normal map in here. And then let's just click on this wood material right here and we can just drop it onto this right here. And then I'm gonna go back over to layout and then I want to apply the mirror modifier because if we have the mirror modifier still on, the wood texture is gonna be mirrored over and it'll look exactly the same on both sides and that will look pretty weird. So I'm gonna go over here and just apply the mirror. Now we need to add some seams before we UV unwrap this because right now the UV unwrapping is really weird and glitchy because uh, it's just using the default UV unwrapping from the cube that we added. So to add the seams, I'm going to deselect everything and then I'll alt and click on this edge and I'm just gonna go around the entire object and hold down shift and alt and click on these edges here and just move over and shift and alt and click on all of these loops right here. And if this is in the way, we can tab into object mode, click on the chair legs, press H to hide it, and then click back on the seat and tab into object mode again, and then continue selecting. So holding down shift and alt and clicking on all these loops and keep on going until you've gone all the way around and there, now all these are selected. And now with all of these selected, I'm gonna press Control E and I'm going to mark the seam. So why we're marking these seams is so that then Blender knows how to UV unwrap it. And a good way to think about UV unwrapping is to think about your object, so in this case the chair, as being a paper chair. And what we wanna do is we wanna cut out the different pieces of the chair and make them flat. So because we added the seams here, this entire front face, that can be cut out and be flat. And then if we add that again to the bottom one, that can be flat as well. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna add a seam right here so that this little strip on the side here can all be flattened out. So basically we wanna flatten out things uh, so that then it can be applied onto the wood texture. So I'm gonna do the same thing all the way around on the bottom side too. So I'll hold Alt, click on this one right here and then shift and alt and click all the way around on all the different sides. Over here. And 
and we're almost done. Shift and Alt, and now we have all these selected. So I'm gonna press Control E again and mark the seam. And then let's just do this little area right here on the back. And why I'm doing this on the back of it is because this is probably the hardest place to see. And so we're not gonna be seeing any seams right here because we're gonna be rendering the chair from the front view. And so we're probably not gonna see this little seam right here. So I'm gonna click on this vertice right here and then shift and click on these other three vertices, control E and then mark seam. Now let's select the entire chair and press U and we're gonna unwrap just by clicking the unwrap button. And now it's unwrapped and it does look a lot better, um, but we can go ahead and play around with some of the UV unwrapping to kind of fix that. You can see this is kind of like rotating down the wood grain and that's a little bit weird. So to fix this, let's go into UV editing. And in the UV editor right here, you can see here's our UV unwrapped mesh and it's all been cut out and flattened on the wood. And we can actually just click on this base color instead because I don't know why it used the normal map. Um, and then right here, you can see this is rotating a bit. And to just fix this, we can box select this and box like this, and then press R to rotate and move it over a bit, uh, just like this, and just kind of straighten that out. And then also just box select this right here and rotate that. And what this is right here is this is the side of it that we UV unwrapped. And then these two pieces right here, this is the top and the bottom of our seat. So let's just fix this uh, as well. So I'm going to just box select this entire thing. I'll rotate it and just make it so that it's about the same as this one right here. And then I'll box select this. And I'm pressing B and then selecting it and then rotate that over just so that it's straighter. So this isn't perfect, but it is gonna make it a lot better. And you can see now if we want to go into the look dev mode, I can press Z, move my mouse down, and then go to that material preview just to see what that's looking like. And you can see now that's a lot straighter and it looks a lot better. And then I do want to rotate this wood grain because the, right now the wood grain on the top is going this way, but then the wood grain on the side is going up and down. So it makes more sense that the wood grain on the side should be going this way. So I'll tab into edit mode and then just deselect everything and press B and box select this group right here. And then I'll press R for rotate. And then I'll type in 90 for 90 degrees and enter. And you can see now, if I just move this down, now the wood grain is going back and forth. And so I think that just looks a lot better. And then if we wanna scale the entire thing, we can just select it all with A and then scale it to the size that we want. So I might scale it up just a little bit. And then let's do the same thing for this right here. So I'll just move over and tab into edit mode. And let's just go back over to the layout to do this. So I'll press period on the number pad to just hop over to this object. And then I'll tab into edit mode. And then I'll press alt and click on this loop right here. And then hold down shift and alt and click on all the other loops on the edge here. So I'll just go around this one, this one, holding down shift and alt. Okay, and then also if we wanna do this at the same time, we can. So I'll just do the same thing right here. Just select these all the way around. And then I'll press control E, mark seam. And then right down here, you're not gonna be able to see this very well in the render. So I'll just shift click on these three press control E and mark seam. Okay, and then we can select everything and press U and unwrap. And then let's go back over to the UV editing. And here is the object. And to fix this a little bit, I do want to rotate this the other way. So I'll just select everything and press R for rotate 90 degrees and enter. I think because this is longer this way, it's probably gonna be better to have the wood grain going back and forth. And then you can see the same thing is happening where the wood grain is kind of uh, tilted like this. And I don't really like how that looks because probably in real life, how they would make this chair is they would like slowly bend the wood so that it's kind of bent like this. So the wood grain would be bent with this curve. So to fix this, I'm just going to make this straightened out. So I can just press A to deselect everything, B and box select this right here. 
and then just box select this one and I can press G and then with my middle mouse wheel I can click and that way it will move to uh, whatever axes you want it to. And then if this is happening where this is kind of connected to this, what we can do is just make sure everything is deselected, hover your mouse over uh, this group right here and press L and then it will select all the linked vertices and I need to do this for this one too. So I'll press L and that'll select all the vertices that are joined together and then I can just press G and move this over out of the way. It's my green water bottle, which is the same green color as my green screen behind me, so. Okay, and then let's deselect everything and I'll just box select these right here, move them down. And then to deselect this, we can press B and then middle mouse click. And that way, instead of selecting it, it'll deselect it. And then let's just move this down. And then on the other side here, we just need to do that right here. So I'll box select this, press G and middle mouse click and then let go and then click right here and then B and middle click and that'll deselect it and then press G middle click and straighten that out. And if it's a little bit offset, like that's not gonna really make a big deal. You're not really gonna be able to notice that. I'll press zero on the number pad to go back into camera view. Let's actually go back into shading now and I'll press Alt H to unhide the chair legs. And now there's a few things I wanna to do to make this wood material a little bit nicer. One thing that I wanna do is make this wood material a little bit darker. So to do this, I'll press Shift A. I'm gonna search for RGB curves. Just click on that and bring it in right there. And then I'm just gonna move this down a little bit and that'll make the color a little bit darker. And then the last thing I wanna do is, usually the wood on furniture is really smooth. It's usually been polished and stuff so that you don't get splinters or anything. So this strength value of the normal map, I'm just gonna make it 0.5. So that'll only be half the amount of bumpiness. And that way it's gonna make this uh, wood material look a lot smoother. The chair is basically finished now. Uh, let's set up some more lighting to make it a little bit better. And then I also want to add two chairs and then let's also add a ground. So um, one thing that I want to do is just press B in the camera and box select it so that it only has to render what's inside the camera. And then also uh, if you click on the camera, so let's go back over here, click on the camera um, and then go over here to these settings. Um, I want to make this a square image just because I think it looks a little bit cooler. So I'm just going to type in on the Y value 1920. So it's the same as this top one right here. And that way it's a square image. And then I want to make two chairs. So I'm going to press seven to go to top view. And actually we should be doing this in the layout so that we have more room. So I'll press seven on the number pad to go to top view. And then I'm just going to select all the parts of the chair so just make sure they're all selected and this first chair I want to rotate it a little bit this way and move it out a little bit and then the second chair I'm gonna press shift D and that'll duplicate the entire object and then I'll rotate this one and make it a little bit behind the other chair so now if we go into camera view we can see we have this nice uh, little composition I want to move this a little bit back more just like that okay and then I'm going to click on the camera by just clicking on this little uh, red outline and I'll just press G, move it up a little bit, click, and then I'll press uh, R to rotate and then I'll press R again and we can rotate this down a little bit and you can hold down a shift to make the movements more precise. And then once I have that centered on the chairs, I'll click and then press G to move and then double tap Z and that way it'll move back and forth or forward and backwards and just uh, zoom in a little bit and then let's add a ground plane so I'll press shift A add a plane scale it way up I'm just gonna scale it up until it's just covering the entire scene let's add a material to this ground plane so I'll click on the materials panel click on new and then I just want to make it kind of a gray color because it's going to reflect a lot off of the chairs. 
And then over here on the object settings, I'm going to go down to visibility and I'm going to turn on the shadow catcher. And that way it's just going to catch the shadows. And then in compositing, we'll add a, a white background to it. So let's go into rendered mode by pressing Z and moving up just to see how this looks. So right now the lighting is a little bit boring. What I'm going to do is actually make the world strength a little bit less. So we're still getting those reflections and then I'm gonna add in some lights. So I'll go back into solid view and I'll press shift A and add a plane. And I want this plane to become a rim light in the background of the chairs. So I'll press G, move it over and then R and X, move it up and we'll scale it on the Z axis and rotate it over like this. And then over here, I'm gonna add a new material I'm going to click here and then click on E to make it an emission. Let's go into the rendered mode and I'll make the strength a lot more. And you can see what it's doing is it's adding the little bit of a rim light right here and here. And that'll just kind of make it pop out of the background and make it look a little bit nicer. And then I do want this light to be slightly blue just because I think it adds just a little bit to the image. And let's make it a little bit brighter even. And then I do want to add one more main light over here. So I'll just shift D and duplicate this one. I'll go back into solid mode and we can just move this around and rotate it. I'll just find a good spot. And there we go. So uh, this is pretty much done. Let's just go file and save again. And then let's set up some render settings. And on the sampling here, I'm just going to set it to a hundred, uh, the light paths, the total, I'll just set to two, diffuse and glossy, we can just set that to two, and then all of these, the transparency, transmission, all these, we can turn to zero. And if we turn this to zero, Blender won't have to calculate as many light paths, and it'll just speed up render times, but we do need these to make sure the wood material looks really nice. I'll save this image again by going file and save, and then I'm gonna press F12 to render the image and the render is finished. So let's go over to the compositing tab and I'm going to click on use nodes and then just make sure this backdrop is turned on and I'll press shift a and I'm going to add an alpha over. So I'm just going to search for that. I'll drop the alpha over in between these two and then this image, I'm going to set this to the bottom one and then that way the image will actually be on top and then this white will be on the background. And then I'll press shift A, I'll search for the denoise node just so that we can denoise the image and make it look nicer. And then this is a node wrangler setting, which we enable the node wrangler in the starting of the tutorial. I'm going to press control shift and click on the denoise node and that'll add that viewer. And that way we can see the image preview in the background. And then right now it's too big. So I'll just press V just to zoom this out a bit. This background color, I think if it's super white, it looks a little bit blown out. So I'm gonna make it just kind of a gray color. And then to save this image, we can go over to the rendering tab. And then right here from render result, I'm gonna to go to the viewer node. And there's the final image. So I'll press shift alt S to save the image. So just save that somewhere where you can find it and then just save that. Real quick, I'm just gonna make the table legs a little bit brighter and then I'll just render that out again. On the best result that I got, I did have the chair legs a little bit lighter of a metal color. And then also whatever background color you want, you can just change that. So thanks for watching this video. I hope it was helpful and I'll see you guys in a future video.